Hey there, my gorgeous friends on the internet. What's poppin'? Brand new whip just hopped in. Do you like fun? Then this video is not for you because we're gonna learn how to make a rich text editor in React using TipTap. If you've never built out a rich text editor before, it's gonna give you the same vibe as building out a carousel. Oh, Ed, but I can just add an on click with a transform translate of 100 and move them by. But does it loop? Exactly. Does it have the little arrow? It don't. My wife's posters, they're not mine. So today I'm gonna to teach you how to implement a rich text editor using chat, CN, and React hook form. So it's gonna be fun. Do we have a sponsor for this episode? No. Let's start off by hopping in VS Code and installing create next app. So let's run the command npx create next app at latest. We're gonna use TypeScript, ESLint as well, Tailwind, no for the source directory, yes for the app router, and that's it. Next up, we're gonna use chat CN to style our inputs and our form. So let's head over to documentation, installation, next, and we're gonna run this command down here. For the chat CN, I'm gonna choose TypeScript here, New York as the default style. For the global CSS, I'm gonna leave it as default. CSS variables is gonna be yes. For the tailwind config here, I'm just gonna hit tab and change it to TS because that's how it's configured here. Otherwise, it's gonna make two files and that sucks. So now that the CLI is up and running, what we can do now is just do add and import any component from chat CN. So whether it's a form or input or a button. Next up, we're gonna use React hook form. If you have any kind of forms in your React application, this is probably your go-to. It has validation, it has error handling, you can easily display messages on the screen, but it integrates nicely with Zond. So that's why we are using it. So let's install this, let's go to get started and run this command here. So for our rich text editor, we're gonna be using TipTap. Fantastic, it's free, it's customizable and open source. There's loads of other ones out there, but my God, the prices that they're asking, rich text editor, you have to be rich to use those services. 800, you know how much drugs I can get for this money? Now let's head over to installation and Next.js and we're gonna install these three dependencies right here. Okay, let's get going. So what we're gonna do is just install the form from chat CN here, and we're gonna import a couple of components. So we'll do form, and then you have control label and a couple of other stuff that you'd normally use in the form. And then we'll also import and use form from React hook form. Again, this is gonna handle all the, the logic behind it. So let's initialize it. We're gonna say use form like that, and that's that. Easy peasy, eh? But here we can also pass a couple of options in. So if I expand this, we can pass in a resolver. So if you wanna do any validation, we're gonna do that in a sec. You can also pass a mode. So when do you want it to happen? Maybe on change or on blur. Uh, in this case, on change. So every time someone types in an, a value, that form is gonna keep track of all the changes and it's gonna throw you back an error message or a valid message after that. And we can also pass down default values. So maybe I have a name input here or a title, and I can say, hey, that's gonna be an empty string by default. And maybe a price, which is gonna be like a number, so we can pass that down. But we also might have a rich text editor. So I'll just say description here, and I'll pass it an empty string as the default. So how can we handle validation? Well, we can import Zod. So let's have that installed and then we can create a schema. So I'll call this form schema like that. You can export this and just pop it in another file if you want. I'll just leave it here so it's simple to see. But you can create a, let's say we're gonna make a object here and this object is gonna have three values, right? Title, price, description. So we can just write all of that out. Title, this is gonna be a string. So I can mark that like that. I can say that a minimum value should be five. And here you can pass in another message option saying, hey, the title is not long enough or whatever. So there we go, that's our form schema. And for the validation for the rich text, again, it depends what you need it for. Like, are you gonna save this to a database? I just removed all the, trimmed all the white spaces here, made it the string, a min max. And then I guess if you wanna save it to a database, you can use something like DOM Purify to get rid of like XSS attacks and stuff like that. And now to actually use it, what we can do is just pass down a generic to the use form. So I can say Z infer, and I can say the type of is gonna be of form schema, and that's it. So to actually render out this input component here, we just need to use everything that we imported from chat CN. So we're gonna create that form here. We're gonna create a form field 
the item, the label, the control for it, so we can look and see what values are changing and the actual input. And I forgot to import this actually from uh, chat CN, so make sure you import that as well. But what we're doing essentially is we're spreading all the props here from React hook form into the form. And then here for the control and name, you can pick the name that you want for it. And then we're rendering out and this field is going to give you loads of valuable information. So you could do field.value if you want to get the actual value of it. You can do on change on it if you want to modify it. Um, yeah, it's fantastic. As you can see, we still don't have any validation working. And when I hit submit, it just refreshes the page. So we're going to need to add a resolver here. So if I say resolver, and we're going to need to import the Zod resolver from hook form resolver. So install this package, actually, I forgot to do it. And this is going to just take a look at your validation schema here, and it's going to put it up against the input. And if it matches, then it's fine. If it doesn't, then it's going to throw you an error. So we're going to say Zod, Zod resolver. And we're just going to pass in that form schema, this one that we just made. Hit save. And need a comma here. Save. And now if I type, look at that. If you also want to handle the submission of the form, you can just pass this on submit here. And you can just infer, infer the values from the form schema as well. And all the values that are passed in this on submit are perfectly safe and validated now. So if I do values dot title, as you can see, that's going to be fine. So again, you can use a server action here to save it to your database or whatever. But down here, we need to also pass in an on submit. So let's go on submit. It's going to be form the handle submit. So we're letting react hook form handle the submit for us. And we're just going to pass in our own custom function. So let's create another form field but for our rich text editor. So let's go down here at the bottom and I'm going to create another form field like that. I'm going to leave everything the same way. The only difference is, let me just remove these for now, I'm going to add a tip tap. We don't have this component so let's create it quickly. Let's head over to our components and call this tip tap. .tsx. Perfect. To actually pass down the values that we need in tip tap, we can pass down the actual field values using field.name. So we'll pass that down as a description here, and we'll also passing down the on change for the field. So we have ability to control that. So on change is gonna be field on change. Now, if we had in the tip tap here, you're gonna see that I imported them here. I added the types for it, and then I'm initializing the editor here for us. I'm gonna say use editor, and this can take in a couple of options. So first of all, it's the extensions. So starter kit is gonna give you loads by default. So if you just import that, you'll be fine. I'll show you how you can customize this as well. The content is gonna be the description that we got from the input. And you can also customize the styling of the editor using editor props. So you can just pass down the class here and you can make it look exactly like chat CN. And on update here, what you can also do is call on change. So we're taking whatever is in the editor and I can convert it over. I can convert it over to HTML. I can make a JSON text. Again, depends what you need. So now that we have our editor content, let's create this toolbar really quickly. And as you can see, I'm passing down this editor in it as well. So how does this component look like? Well, we're going to use client at the top. We're going to import the type editor here just so we can pass down the props. And then I'm importing a couple of icons here from Lucid React. Fantastic little library. And that's it. And then from the UI from chat CN, I just imported toggle and then pass down the props. Basically what I'm saying here is if the toolbar, if the actual rich text box doesn't exist, then I don't want to render out the toolbar either. So if the editor is not there, then there's no point of having the toolbar there either. And this is really simple here now. I can just pass down this toggle, the size I want. If it's active, I can just unhighlight it. So I'm saying editor is active. If the heading's active, then make it unactive. And on press change here, I can chain together multiple commands uh, to do whatever I want. So using this editor, you can chain. This change chain function literally is for the only reason. So you can do a couple here, multiple in a row. So basically, like let's say I'm hitting this B here, it's automatically gonna focus on the input, but it's also gonna toggle maybe the heading that I want here. All right, and then the level of heading that I want. So I can say I want a H2 and then I can run that command. 
And that's the whole functionality. You can do it on everything. So editor chain focus toggle bold, I can toggle italic, toggle strike, etc, etc. So you can just keep keep expanding this as much as you want. And then in tip and in the tip tap component here, I'm just passing down the editor as well so it knows the context and the relation between the two. So to customize it, I also added an extension here from heading, but the configure here in the starter kit already has quite a couple of options that you can choose from. But I'll add this custom one here called heading. Again, I just imported it from extensions here. And using the heading here, I can configure this as well. Configure, I can say HTML attributes, and for example, class. I can make this large text Excel and font bold. Now, what should this apply for? Levels two. So if they do a heading two, then it should apply these styles. So let's take a look. Hello there. Let's grab that, make it bold. It ain't working. Maybe we need a refresh. Boom, yes, we did. Hey there, perfect. And now I can undo this if I want to. So I can select undo and now it's a normal paragraph. And then I can make this bold, italic, and etc, etc. So thank you so much for watching. I'm really excited to tell you that the rich text editor is going to be added in the new update for the next 13 course. It's going to come out very, very soon. It's going to be free, but we're going to be using a rich text editor there to basically add products in our back end. And you're going to love this. This is a big upgrade from the previous course. We're going to have color pickers. We're going to be able to upload images straight from Cloudinary. That's going to give us back a link that can be added. We can add multiple variants for the products here. So maybe I want a product that's a blue journal and then I can add another one maybe a couple more here maybe I want a green journal with its own name and that's going to be saved with Rizzle loads of exciting stuff I'm excited check out the courses on developedbyed.com and I'll see you in the next one peace